about to watch is a full seminar that I recorded, uh, the, the second of two seminars that I did here at Chengdu BJJ here in Chengdu, China, where I still am. I'm in my hotel room, about to head out for my flight uh, back to Vietnam. Something to say about the seminar before it gets started. Uh, two things, actually. The first is that um, the lighting wasn't great. You have to keep in mind, I'm recording... You know, I'm giving the camera to a guy who, you know, he's not a camera guy. He's just, you know, a jiu-jitsu guy. He's one of the owners of the gym. You know, he's doing me a favor, even doing the recording whatsoever. Um, I'm, I'm teaching an in-person seminar in a country where I can't speak the language, right? There's a lot of different things I'm juggling, right? So the lighting isn't amazing, but cut me some slack. Still got it recorded, and it's definitely still viewable. You can, you can see what's going on. At the end of the day, I, I always tell this to people when they record my, uh, my seminars. This is not a Martin Scorsese production. It's a fucking jujitsu video, okay? So if you have a problem with the lighting, this is a free fucking video. Get over it, okay? Second thing is that uh, this is a cool thing about the video, something I've never had before. There, uh, We had a translator. So he's translating my English into Chinese. So if English is not your first language... You, you can't, or if you can't speak English, you can't understand what I'm saying now anyway, <laughs> um, then the uh, the Chinese translator will make this video watchable. So yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy. Today, we're going to talk about two positions mainly. We're, we're mainly going to talk about one position, but we'll, we're going to look at another as well. Uh, so actually, come to this side here. The main, and uh, sit down for me. The main position that we're going to look at is... I think one of the best leg lock positions to, this is one of the best leg lock positions to learn leg locks from, okay? This is called the cross ashi, and um, it's really, really strong position, and it also teaches you a lot of very important principles defensively and offensively, okay? So first, so who, who uh, raise your hand if you, if you have never seen this position before. You, you can be honest. Has anyone never seen this before? Okay, so everyone's at least seen it. Okay, all right, that's good. Um, so, so I won't talk about how to get into the position, right? Let's just get into the position like so, right? Now let's just talk about how the position functions. Okay, so put, put me inside the position. Okay, first thing to understand about this position is um, how the defensive person should react at first, right? When you, when you first get put into this position, okay? So what he's looking to do, the main thing he wants is an inside heel hook, right? That's his main goal. Um, his ability to get that is gonna be connected a lot with his ability to control my secondary leg. So this is my primary leg, this is my secondary leg, right? If he can control my secondary leg, that changes pretty much everything. But let's first talk about if he doesn't have that. If he doesn't have control of my secondary leg, he just has my primary leg, uh, what I want to do is I want to turn like this so that you want to aim to have the back of your knee, so if you guys see my knee, the back of my knee points at his hips, right? So I've got the, the back of my knee pointing at his hips, okay? Um, is, D David's not coming today. I'm not sure. To translate? Okay. Well, we have a translator. Who okay. speaks the best English? Do you speak good English? Yeah, he yeah. speaks okay. perfect. So, so it, uh, guys, do you guys need, what, what is your name? Well, Wong Kung. Well, Wong Kung, yeah. Wong Kung? Do yeah, you guys need it. Wong Kung to translate or we're good? The kill translate. Okay. okay, okay, all right, sounds good. Okay, if, if at any point, if anyone doesn't understand, just you can stop and translate and stuff, okay? Yeah. All right, so the back of my knee points at the hips. That's what I want defensively. Because what that does is it turns my heel so the heel, right, that's what he wants to grab, right? If I turn so that the back of my knee faces at his hips, my heel is in a position where it's not at a good angle for him to grab, okay? So you're just going to sit in the position. I'm going to turn. The, the way I'm going to turn my leg is really by turning my hips. So I'm going to turn my hips. Now I'm on my left hip, my right hip, my right basically butt is off the mat. The back of my right knee faces at his hips. Okay, and what I'll also do is point my toes, but that's, to be honest, less important than, the, they're, they're both important, but the most important thing is turning your leg in the correct way, right? Now, if I'm here, if I turn the other way, look at what I've just done. 
I've made it really easy for him. I made it really easy for him, okay? Um, there was a match, I was just watching this this morning from Brazilian, so Brazilian trials just happened for ADCC uh, in Sao Paulo, and Fabricio Andre won. And Fabricio Andre had a really nice entry into a knee bar. And if you look at where his arm is for this knee bar, if the guy had rotated to get out of the knee bar, he would have been able to catch a heel hook, right? So, because if his hips face the front of my knee, he can expose my heel. So see here, his hips face the front of my knee. So if his, let's say his right arm, so come a little bit closer to me. So look, look at right here, he has a, this is a knee bar. But if I turn, now he has a heel hook. Can't keep the heel, now he has a heel hook. And that's because of where his hips are relative to my knee. Does that make sense, guys? So the first thing to understand about this position is the main sort of, the main like, uh, uh, the main like dynamic that will determine whether he can immediately heel hook me or not is what part of my primary leg is pointing at his hips. The, if it's the side of my knee, right now it's the side of my knee, right? It is maybe 50-50. Maybe I don't get caught, maybe I do. If it's the back of my knee, I'm pretty safe. For him to heel hook me here is really, really hard. Okay, if it's the front of my knee, there's no way I'm not getting heel hooked. He's, he, like, if, if, if I don't get heel hooked here, he just is not trying to do it. It's so easy for him to do it. Think of this, guys, I want you to think of this as being like if someone takes your back and you did this, right? You're just picking your chin. Like if they don't choke you, it's because Okay, did you need a yeah, chance? Like, yes, yes, okay. okay. Yeah, it's, just, it's a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Do me a favor. Come, come over here. Come over here. Do, do it on camera. Yeah, yeah. So it's back up. And you can point, point at point at stuff. Yeah, yeah. Go guide it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, good? Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, so does this make sense, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, what, what I want you to do, this is, this is a very basic thing, but it's kind of like useful for us to understand the posi position. We're just gonna sit here. I want you to turn one way to hide the heel. He's gonna kind of, don't go super hard, but he's gonna go to get a heel hook. It should be really, really difficult. Then, you're gonna go back. Then we're gonna turn the other way. Then he's gonna, yeah, he's just gonna get a heel hook. And what this is gonna teach us is, okay, the movement of our hips, that's controlling the direction of our leg is gonna dictate whether he can get a heel hook or not here easily, okay? And this is a very big deal. This sort of, understanding this mechanic is pretty much the core of understanding this position, uh, generally speaking, and it's a big lesson for leg locks in pretty much every position, okay? It makes sense, guys? Yes? All right, let's give it a try. One, two, three. Uh, all right, guys, so now let's talk about um, how he can prevent what I'm doing here. So I'm, uh, I'm turning, I'm hiding my heel. It's difficult for him to get uh, an inside heel hook. Okay? So, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, now that the robot is going to start his foot, and then he will teach us to how to prevent him to get an inside heel hook. Okay, so how is he gonna, how is he gonna prevent this? So I'm gonna go into the position now. So, what we want to do is we want to control the secondary leg, okay? Again, this is the primary leg, this is the secondary leg. So, to control the secondary leg, the way I want you to do it is this. Uh, it, 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 it's going to be a matter of getting control of it with our arms, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this leg and go flat. That's going to let my chest go forward. Now I take my, my hands and I'm going to bend my wrists. One, and then two. Now, this is what you don't want to do. Don't try to do this. 
When you do this, you, you might get it, but it's also gonna tire your back out. He's gonna pull against, you're pulling against, it's energy consuming. Right? It takes a lot of energy, right? Hopefully the, my facial expression. <laughs> so what I really wanna do is this. All I'm, all I'm doing is changing with the knee points. Okay. I don't care about the ankle. I just care about the knee. If the knee points out, I can't get my arm over it. If the knee points in, I can. Do you guys see it? I, I, I don't move the ankle yet. I can get over it. Now, once my arm gets over the knee, then my body falls back. That will control the ankle. Okay? That's way less energy consuming um, than if uh, I, I, I try to just grab and pull. Like, guys, right now, Jerry is holding the camera. Jerry has massive legs. Imagine trying to, on Jerry, grab his leg and just pull it to your chest. Could you do it? Maybe, but it's gonna be really energy consuming. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. What you wanna do instead is, I drop this leg, I bring my chest forward, I, I grip with hooked wrists, and now I don't try to pull the leg to me, I just try to point the knee at my chest. And once the knee's at my chest, look, this can go over, and then the rest of the work is not done by my muscles, but by like basically my body weight falling back. And then I put my elbow in between the legs. Now, what we've done is um, we've controlled his ability to move his hips. Okay, not completely, he still can, but we've, we've limited his hip mobility. Right? Before here, his hip mobility is, I'm basically not doing anything to control it, right? Like, not really. Um, but as soon as I get control of both of his legs, his hip mobility is limited. And that's really, really key. Everything defensively in this position comes from hip mobility. So we want to reduce hip mobility. Okay. Make sense, guys? Yes? Okay, all right, let's give this a try. One, two, three. Um, let's talk about uh, what we want to do with our feet in this position and what we don't want to do, okay? So, when you're in this position, uh, generally speaking, there's two different types of foot position that we can use, and there's there's one that we really want to avoid, okay? Kind of like two different, it's like one type of thing we want to avoid, but it can happen in, in a couple of different ways. So the first most basic position to have your feet is foot to ankle. So look at my left foot. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the side of my ankle. This is good for a couple of reasons. One, it's very safe. It, he doesn't have any counters. He can't really leg lock me. Okay, and two, this is very important. It allows me to use this knee to control his leg. One way he can try to get out, if my left knee is really low, is he can take his primary leg and he can curl his hamstring to his butt. So take your primary leg. Yes. So that's one way he can try to get out. It's not really that good of an escape, uh, but you will, have, you will have people who are crazy flexible who will, sometimes they'll, they'll grab their own shin. Uh, uh, grab. Yeah, and they, they find their way out. That can happen. The way we want to prevent that is by having a good position with our knee. See how my knee here? The top of my thigh will block the calf of his primary leg. So when he goes to curl it, it's very difficult. Here, he can, he can get it out yet. Yeah, so easy, right? Nothing is stopping that, right? So I want to go foot to foot, or sorry, I should say foot to ankle. It's like the side of my ankle. Not this, don't do this. Because look, if I go here, how can I raise my knee? It's not, it's kind of a little bit awkward. I go here, this is very easy. Does that make uh, sense? 
这里他讲的第一个技术是把左脚脚后跟拿到右脚，把左脚脚脚掌拿到右脚脚后跟这里，不要两个脚后跟对在一起，这样左脚抬不起来。当你拿到这里来以后，有两个优点，第一个优点是这里你很安全，你的左脚很安全，对方不会进攻你。第二个，你的大腿可以帮助你控制他的这条腿。刚才他展示了一下这个对方的逃脱。OK。Now the other thing is this. When his hips come off the floor, so let's say he comes up. So, if my foot is attached to my ankle, I can push with my leg and put him down. So he come back up. It's very easy. Pretty much no matter no matter how high he gets, it's very simple. I just push, and he goes back down. Let's rotate this way. Ah, no, no, no. Here's good. Uh, very, very easy. Okay, the next leg position we can use is a triangle. But we have to be very careful with how we triangle. I don't want to leave my leg over here. We're going to talk about why in a second, but there are some leg lock counters you can get hit with. Try to keep your triangle tight. Okay, the advantage of this is that it's, you're squeezing tighter, right? So there are ways we can use this to go into heel hooks, okay? That's more advanced. The basic thing is this. This is the, be this is the most basic and, and best way to have your legs in this position at first. But having a triangle is good, but again, make sure, look at where my foot is. It's not over here. See how close it is to his butt? That's what we want, all right? We'll look at that more later. For now, let's talk about what we don't want to do as well, okay? So make, make a triangle. Yeah, so do you want to just like talk about the triangle, I guess I, I just said? OK， 还要做什么 ？Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. OK， 呃、uh, ，刚才讲就是在前面的第一个，就是对方如果屁股离地的话，你通过第一种双脚的配置，你可以把对方给蹬下去。然后，这个是前面的第一种基础配置。然后有一种进阶一点的双脚的配置，就是你搭上那个三角，但是你要把你的三角藏在他的屁股下面。这个三角会比之前的更紧，但是也更高级。OK, okay so guys, what we don't want to do is leave this foot. Over here, and we especially don't want to do this. You will see people do this. This is an old school thing that people used to do. The goal of this is to control my uh, my hip, right? If I go to come up, he can push down. He can control my hip. This used to be something that you could get away with, but nowadays you can't because of the, the there's new counters that have been created, right? So if he puts his foot here. Where does his foot need to be for an Aoki lock? We talked about this yesterday. An Aoki lock, I need to have the foot on my ribs, basically underneath my pec muscle. Where is he putting his foot? That's literally exactly where he's putting his foot. So all I have to do is go underneath, and then ask yourself, how is he gonna get out of this now? His own legs are tying him up. So it's, this is really bad, and the reality is, if someone's strong and they know how to do this move, you're probably going to get tapped with this, or you're going to get injured, right? So it's, you've just put yourself in a really bad move. So never ever do this, okay? You don't want to put your foot on his neck, put your foot on his neck, put your foot on his neck. Also, don't leave it over here. You don't want to put it here. There's two reasons. The first is that it's easy for me to do this and get out. If the leg's over here, the knee isn't very high. I can like do that. The second reason is, if you have someone who's really big and strong, they can also ankle lock you here. Okay, I have had, I was rolling with a really, really strong person years ago who grabbed this ankle lock on me and I, it, I almost didn't even believe it was gonna work. They got it and they blasted it and it was really strong <laughs> and I tapped. Right, like, because this can work. If they're really strong, they can catch here and ankle lock you. So we just don't want to leave this leg exposed to that. 我放在这里的第二个原因是，如果对方非常的强壮的话，会在这里直接做你直推手。Bang! They can hit you. It's almost like a a Kyotera. It's not exactly, but it's a little bit like a Kyotera ankle lock, right? So. 有点像岳父手这个。So again, what we want to do is foot a foot to ankle. So let's go foot to ankle. So let's go. Yes. Uh, good. Very good. This is perfect. Very good, good, good. We want this. This is the best thing to start with. Keeping the knee. Look at where his knee is. Don't worry about squeezing. This leg doesn't need to squeeze. We. So it's not about squeezing. It, it with a triangle, it is about squeezing. But with this, it's not. 
It's just about having the correct position of this knee. If this knee is high, look, keep that leg there, good. I can't curl my leg out. If it's low, I'll put it very, very low, good. It's like, obviously, it just, it's a, that's not very good, right? Here, this is good. He's got a wedge, right? This is a wedge. It's preventing the ability of my ankle to move towards my butt. Make, does this make sense, guys? Yes? Alright, let's give it a try. One, two, three. Alright, guys, so now let's talk about um, let's talk about a few things that will not get him out of this position and will just give you a heel hook. Okay? So the first thing is, and don't don't do this hard. Okay. Let's say I'm here. Let's say I only have one leg. Let's say I only have one leg. And he goes and he grabs my head with this arm. And he comes towards me. All you have to do is push down with your left foot and then catch the heel. He's giving me the heel hook. Okay, let's sit down. Why is he giving me the heel hook? Because he's turning, think about it. We, this is the first thing we looked at. If he turns this way, that's exposing, he's exposing his own heel, right? And if he wants to grab my head, so turn that way, he can't really grab my head. He can grab my head with this arm, but that's not really gonna do anything, you know what I mean? He, he wants to grab my head with this arm. If he's turning this way, he, he can't really, so turn that way and grab my head with this arm. It's very awkward. Like this is very awkward. He can't put any real pressure on me. If he wants to put pressure on me, he's gonna turn this way, but that's just gonna expose his own heel. Does that make sense, guys? So that does not work here. Now he's on top of me. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. My, my back hurts. Bo, bo, bo. <laughs> if, he's, if he's on top of me, it can work. But if we're both seated, he grabs my head, he's just exposing his own heel. Okay, yeah, go ahead and translate. Okay. 然后我们现在讲一下，就放到常见的几种错误反应。第一种错误反应就是，就会来抓我的头，他只要来抓我的头，他就会送猪的。呃，他左，他用右手来抓我的头的话，他就会面向我，然后就会暴露他的足跟。
to do this, okay? And the one I recommend practicing first, all right? So, I've got this position, like so. What I wanna do, what we're gonna try to do is get my left arm underneath the leg. Because now, I still have control of this leg, but I can go back for a heel hook, right? Whereas here, the leg is in my way. Right, but again, I don't want to just let go of the leg. I don't want to just let go of the leg, because then he can just get away, right? So I want to hold the leg for as long a period of time as I can and get this arm under here, okay? So the way we do that is like so. I'm going to go over the leg with my right arm, and I'm going to grab his, the shin of his primary leg. Okay? I'm going to go over the knee on this side. Don't go here. This is not very controlled. I want to go over the knee. And I want to have my shoulder as a wedge against the top of the knee. Right, if I'm here, he can just pull the leg back. It's not that tight, okay? What I want to do is go over here. Now, when he goes to pull back, his knee hits my shoulder. Now I take this hand and I grip the ankle. And this is pretty, this is pretty tight now. Also, I'm, be I'm being lazy with my foot position because my back hurts. So, yeah, look, I'm here like this. Just focus on my arms right now. So I'm here. Now when he goes to pull this leg away, it's pretty tough. Okay? So, you got it. Okay. Uh, in this case, he said, when we go to the gym, we don't want to just put the foot on the foot and just find the foot. You have to control the foot on the foot. 然后在刚才那个位置，他的第二条腿会挡住你，所以你会把他的第二条腿放在肩膀上面，再去找足跟哥。然后在这里的话，你的右边手肘要在他膝盖以上，然后你的肩膀要去挡住他的膝盖，这样来帮助你进行控制。Now from here, what I'm going to do is this. I've got I'm holding on to him really securely. This is very strong. I'm going to take this hand, okay, and I'm going to go underneath. Once it goes underneath, my right hand. Goes to here. Now I pull everything up, and I use this arm to push the leg up onto my shoulder, and I grip across. Don't do this, okay? Go here, because what I want to do here is I want to have my head against his toes, and if I'm here, I can't do that. So if I go here, he can turn his knee out, and then the heel can pass over my bicep, right? So I can the knee can turn out. Let's do that again. Yeah, it can get away. But if I go here, now I'm, uh, basically by pushing the toes back, I limit the ability of the entire leg to rotate, right? So, <clears throat> so like, if I go here, my head is in contact with the toes. But if I go here, it's not, it's not. So I see, I don't, I see people do this all the time. They go here, it, I guess it, maybe it feels like it's tighter because it's a smaller circle, but it's not, it's not actually. This is significantly more controlling. And then I have this hand here. Now I'm here, okay? Now, this hand goes through his legs. I grip, I pull it up, and then we go back to the heel hook, okay? So it's a much more controlled way of moving into the heel hook, okay? We, we're not just letting go of the secondary leg, we're holding it for as long a period of time as possible and then we're going for the heel hook, okay? So again, here, I go over, okay? Try, when, when you're doing this, two, two really important details. Have your fingers gripping here. Do you guys see where my fingers are? Okay, and the second thing is try to make sure that your, um, your shoulder is on this side of his knee. When you make this grip, what you're going to find sometimes is the knee will start to go this way. Because he's, because he's, if he's smart, that's what he wants to do. He wants to get this leg away, right? So when I go here, okay, my shoulder's in the correct position. But if, if he pulls it, yes, exactly. He could, that's something he could do. He can push on the back of my shoulder and get the knee out. So what I want to do, that's why I grip here. Now, even if he goes to push, you can hold it pretty good, okay? Does that make sense, guys? That's why I'm holding with my left arm. 
right? If he, so do it really, really slow. Okay, no, 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 slower, slow. Okay, so, okay, stop here, stop here, good. See this? How am I gonna get this back? With this. Yeah, when, when, so don't, don't, don't use your hand. Just pull it very slowly back. Yeah, when we start to lose it, like I'm losing the shoulder, the way I can regain it is with, with pushing the ankle. That will get it back where we want it. Okay, now I can go underneath. And now once we're underneath, <coughs> my grip of my right hand changes to this. And then oh, I go up to here like so. And now I lean back, put your head against the foot. Big brother here has very long legs, but I can still get back there. And now we go here. This knee is still high. Remember, this is this is really important here. Just see how to teach Now I go through, we grip, and now we go back. And this is this is very important, guys. We'll talk about this more next. Next, we're gonna talk about how to finish finish a heel hook, but let's talk a little bit about, about it now. When I catch the heel, okay, I don't wanna catch like this. Okay? What's happening is my, my forearm is parallel with his leg. That's not very good. We'll, we'll talk about that more next, but just now note, this is pretty shit. What I wanna do is I wanna be like this, so that when my tricep hits his toes, I'm pushing his toes down, that will push his heel up, right? When one half of his, it's, think about this, it's very simple. When one half of his leg goes down, the other half goes up, right? So if I want the heel to go up, I'm gonna push the toes down. So this is not pushing the toes down. I'm not doing anything to the toes. I'm just trying to catch the heel. Okay, if he's not very good, you can get it. But if he's good, you're not. So how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna actually get the heel up to make it easy to grab? I'm gonna push the toes down. It's really, really simple. And then look, it's so easy, right? Here, it's almost impossible. He's good, yeah, you'll never get this. It's really, really hard. But if instead, and don't think about getting to the, the heel, think about making the heel easier to get. Okay, so. Okay, makes sense? So, sir, question? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. So look, I push, I do this very slow. Take your arm, go like this, and now take your tricep, and just push, don't push the center of the foot, that's not doing it. Push the toes. And then it's really easy to grab. And when I grab, look at where my arm is. My arm doesn't do this, it does this. It continues to push the toes with my elbow, okay? I'm, we're gonna talk more about that next, okay? But for now, just pay attention to the, I push, I push, 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 push. And don't get too eager, don't catch too early. Push as far back as you can go, then grab. Okay, it's gonna make a very big difference. Okay, make sense guys? Okay, do you want to, you want to translate that last part? Uh,刚才罗特讲了一整套的从控制到降幅的一套转换的流程然后刚才讲了一下怎么去具体怎么去抓这个主根哥 这里你要用你的大臂把他的脚趾头往下按，然后让他的足跟抬起来，然后你的小臂不要去平行于他的小腿，而是平行于他的脚掌。Alright, guys, let's give this a try. One, two, three. Is uh, is his knee okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can both get on. Hold on, actually, let's me get someone who speaks. Who? Uh. I don't, I don't, so I'll do, I'll do. Yeah, let me use David. Can I use you? Yeah, because he speaks English, and I don't want him to make fast moves up in the air. Okay. Like, in the, yeah, roll stuff. <laughs> 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 move this way towards the camera. Hey, your knee is okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Ha. Okay, so. <laughs> all right, so I've never had anyone get injured at a seminar, and I don't want today to be the first day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, now let's talk about finishing the heel hook. The inside yellow, okay? So, um, first, before we look at the move, let's talk about the mechanics. Like, what are we doing with an inside yellow? Okay? Okay, we're going to talk about how to finish this move. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to finish this move. What is the most important thing? So, if we look at David's leg, there's three main points. There's the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Okay? What we want to do is take the ankle and the hip and hold them in place 
as we push the knee internally. Okay, right now what's happening is the ankle is rotating with the knee. Okay, so they're going together. So there's no damage to the knee, obviously, right? What's happening here is <clears throat> the movement is happening together. So the ligaments of the knee are not getting pulled. So through his knee are running his ligaments, right? The ligaments are like, a, like ropes. I feel like you're about to cut it off. <laughs> what we're gonna do is, the goal of, the, of an anti heel is to take specifically the ACL and push each end of the ligament apart from one another. So the ACL attaches to the lower half of the leg and the upper half of the leg. And when I push the knee independent, so if I hold the ankle, I hold the hip, and then we push the knee, each end of the ACL is getting pulled in like a U shape in opposite directions, and that will tear the ACL. So uh, I just put up on my YouTube channel a video where I explain the, the, the mechanism of this, if you wanna like see me talk about it like further. Like this is the basic mechanism of injury of an ACL tear in most sports. So if you look at like an NFL player or a, or a, like a, like a, I don't know, an basketball, a, basketball whatever, yeah, an athlete in, in most sports, what'll happen is the, knee, the foot will plant, it'll hold in place, and then there will be pressure coming from the outside, pushing the knee internally, and then each end of the ACL is getting pulled in different directions. In that case, what's happening is the floor is planting the foot like this. So you'll notice when his foot is extended, there is a lot of rotation at the knee. When the foot is stuck like this, there is minimal rotation at the knee. You can hold this in place much more easily. This is the position someone's foot would be in in a sport like American football. Like this is how you're, you're standing, right? No one stands like this. That's not how someone stands, right? The floor is gonna be here, right? In this case, our arm is gonna act like the floor, okay? And then <clears throat> we're gonna purposefully move the knee internally to do the inside heel lock, okay? So, yeah, I think it's important to, under, this might sound like unnecessarily like complicated, but the reason that I, I, I teach this is because like the worst thing is not, is it the, the worst thing is getting to a heel hook and then not feeling certain about how to actually finish it, mm -hmm. okay? Now you guys will understand, okay, what are we actually doing to the knee? Yeah, sorry, it's a lot.然后在做足跟哥的时候我们的手就是那个地板会把它的脚固定住然后从这边施加压力然后他说就是其实嗯就是说很多人嗯他说为什么要解释这样一个物理学原理就是很多的大家其实并不知道这怎么样正确的去做
uh, we want a bend in the leg, okay? All right, if his leg is straight, it will not create the same possibility for like the mechanics of this move, right? So when the leg is bent, I can compress the knee down. We're not bridging, there's no bridging here. It's, no, no, it's just this. So, yeah, so if you if you move, it will unbend the legs. So don't don't move. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do here is the inside of my thigh compresses. You see that? And I'm not locking the ankle in place, so obviously there's no injury, right? So that's the that's the first part. <clears throat> you get your hips out, and now I take the inside of my thigh, I push here. Now don't squeeze. Don't don't do that. Because what I'm doing is, I'm limiting the possible range that I can take the knee through, right? I want, before we wanted this, but now I don't. Now I want this low, so I can push this as far as it can go. If this is up, look. I'm limiting how far it can go, right? Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, okay, good, good. Okay, so, uh, we bring our hips out, I compress, keep this leg down, don't squeeze, push with this thigh. Now, what are we doing to the leg, okay? So, let, let's talk about that like kind of separately. So, when I catch the heel, I told you guys to do this, right? So we push, 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 we catch. We're gonna keep the same kind of position with our arm. I don't want this to happen. Because what will happen is he can point his toes. Like the toilet, that way? No, 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 the other way. Good, and point, point. Good, and stop here, good, good. Eat. So don't slip, let me just hold it so. Okay, so two things can happen. One, he could heel slip, which will happen a lot of the time. A heel slip is when the heel slips past the wrist. Uh, point your toes again, and stop. Point, good, and turn this way, or stop, good. He'll heel slip, or it just is not a strong grip. This is a very weak grip. This is very, very weak. And what he has is a lot of ankle mobility. Spacing. Yeah, well, it's not even about space to escape, it's about the ankle mobility will run through the ankle to the knee. So even if you're compressing the knee, there's a very low chance it'll actually create enough force to injure the knee. So, it's very weak, okay? <clears throat> to put a lot of tension in the ankle, we want to do this. And I'm going to do this. Uh, let me just have, so we go here. And I want to lean not on my shoulder. Don't do this. Don't do this. I want to be in the middle where my elbow touches my ribs and I'm pulling my wrist this way. And I'm leaning my chest forward and I'm pulling my thumb to my chin. So, so kind of four points. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning on my forearm, not my elbow, not my shoulder, my forearm. My elbow touches my ribs and I bring my wrist this way and to my chin. So. And my chest is forward, don't, don't do this. My chest is forward, you okay? Yeah, I already feel a little bit tension. Yeah, it, it's very tight. If you do this correctly, it's very tight. You, and, and <coughs> let's come close to me. And let's, so don't make any sudden moves, just go very, very slow, okay? Yeah, so, okay. When we practice this, we practice with our hand on the floor. Okay, so you can kind of control the speed. I go here. Okay, you don't need both hands. Right? In real life, you will finish with both hands, but we, when we practice, we, we don't need that. So look, my elbow is touching my ribs. My shoulder is not on the floor. My thumb is pointed at my chin. I pull my thumb to my chin, and I pull my wrist this way. You okay? Yeah, it's, it's pretty tight. Now, what I'm going to do is, I do all of this, and look, it's very quick. If you get the mechanics of this correct, it doesn't take a lot of force to do this, okay? You should not feel like, you should not feel like you're using a lot of energy. The only thing that should feel sore, you should feel like your bicep is getting sore. <laughs> so here? You okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does this make sense, guys? So I get asked all the time. This is not a joke. 
I'm not, I'm not trying to like brag either. I get asked all the time, what is your bicep routine? And I'm like, just doing heel hooks. I'm serious. Like if you do heel hooks a lot, your biceps get so strong because you're squeezing. There's so much tension. Um, there's so much like isometric tension you're squeezing here. So, so we're here. Are you okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's it's just, uh, yeah, so yeah. we're here. And see how close the heel is to the floor, guys? I'm not here because if I'm here, I can't push the knee down. I want to be here. Do you guys see where my hips are? I'm at the side of the knee. Now look, we have a very easy finish, okay? Uh, this is a lot, I know it's complicated. Do you guys want to translate any of it? It's uh, a lot. Does anyone have any questions? We'll go around, yeah. Yeah, we'll go around, okay. All right, let's give this a try very, very slow, okay? One, two, three. This is good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah, good. Yeah, but and do, do you understand you're, you're pushing the knee down? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was good. That was good. You, 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 yes, you can, look, you're, you can do your hips coming up and bridging in. That can also, you're doing the same effect, but in a different way, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay guys, so uh, we're in the Q&A section and someone asked a really good question about braking mechanics and it's, it's, worth, it's worth pointing out. Okay, so let's say we're in a situation where, um, let's say maybe the leg is a little bit straighter than I would like it to be. How do we break the leg here? Well, the compression is not really, uh, even straighter, straight, straight all the way, yeah, good. Stay right here, good. So here the compression is not gonna do anything because I'm not pushing the knee down. Because remember, raise the knee, Remember, the target for my inner thigh is the top outer part of his thigh. That's going to push the knee down. But when he straightens his leg out, I'm not, look, where am I hitting? I'm not hitting there. This is my target and I'm not hitting it. I'm missing it, right? So I'm not pushing the knee down. But what I can do instead is I can bridge. You okay? Yeah. We can bridge and that will still push the knee in. So why not always bridge, right? Because it's a raise the knee for me. I can bridge here, or I can bridge when it's straight. So why not always bridge? Because we have to understand what we're doing is limited to the range of motion through which I can move the knee, right? So I'll just back up for me, so I'll show this without a partner. So, okay, we can put our body through two ranges of motion with our hips and with our shoulders, right? If I bridge, for me to bridge, my shoulders have to go back at the same time, right? That's the range of motion. They, they go together, right? They're, they're essentially linked. But when I compress, it's not required that my shoulders move back. So I can stretch the ligaments through this range of motion, and if I still haven't achieved the break at the conclusion of the compression, then I can stretch my shoulders back to take the ligaments through for a further range of motion. But I can't do that with a bridge. With a bridge, what you're gonna do is, you're, that's it, it's done. There's no more range of motion to go. There's, there's nothing left to do. You've, you've, you've brought your hips as far in as they can go and your shoulders as far back as they can go. At this point, if you haven't broken the leg, you're probably not going to do it, right? Unless you switch the style of mechanics, which you can do. But th through that breaking style, that's it, you're done. You've, you've taken the ligaments through as far a range of motion as is possible. Whereas if I'm here, again, look, one, Two. Right? So they're going, you're stretching it really far. And if you haven't broken it, okay, well, this guy's really flexible. Then you can add that. Whereas here, it's all at once. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, and the other thing that I like about the compression is it's a lot easier to sort of, I find it's much easier to control. Like it's much more like control based. I can hold here, I can do very slow. I can give him time to tap. Okay, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't want to tap. I'm going to break his leg. And then we can finish it. Makes sense, guys? Okay, so we looked at using this position to get an inside heel hug. Okay, we looked at the most basic way to do that. And I think the best way to start doing that. But it's important to understand that this position is really not just about heel hooks. It's also, ultimately what this position is, is a place from which you can control his hips, okay? And that's not just about getting leg locks, it's also about getting on top, 
okay? So if you can get someone into this position, I think this is the easiest position in all of jujitsu to control someone and get on top of them, okay? So, I'll translate it. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sure. Okay, yeah. Sure. Yeah, we're gonna get on top position. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at where my feet are, they're inside. Right, so so let's let's talk about get, getting on top of someone in jujitsu, right? So if I'm on if I'm on bottom, if I'm seated, the, the way I get up is through a heist. And there are three different ways to heist. Okay, so there's three main ways to heist, okay? And all of them require me to move, move my legs, right? Obviously. Right? I've, got to move, I've got to move my legs, right? If I can't move my legs, I can't heist. It's impossible, right? So in this position, what I want you guys to think of this as is a position from where I can heist and he can't because who can move their legs? It's not him, it's me. I can move my legs, he can't. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna be here, and then I'm just gonna get my momentum kind of going this way. I'm just gonna do a technical setup. And let's just turn this way. Yeah. Uh, and go flat on your back. Okay, so, and, and just stay flat there. It'll just make it easier. Okay, so we're gonna be here. Obviously, he's not going to be doing this, but we're just doing this to make it easier. I'm going to kind of rock. A, I, what I like to do is I like to rock a little bit backwards, get momentum. And I come up. And I'm not letting go of the leg. So I do a little bit of a rock backwards. Then I, I go this way. Now, so turn this way again. Now, when we get here, a little bit more. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, stop and go down. Now when I get here, okay, I'm on top of him essentially, right? I'm not just gonna race to get out of here because I could still fall back and leg lock him. Okay. I wanna try to be able to get on top with some kind of really good advantage. So let's say he's coming towards me, right? Let's do a, a very basic series from here, okay? If his arm is here, no, uh, light, light, light. When, 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 his arm, when his arm is here, okay, what I'm going to do is this. The first thing I'm going to look at is simply grabbing the wrist and the elbow, pushing by, gripping the shoulders, and now getting this kind of a, like a tie up, right? Now I turn my hips so they face me. Yeah, and they just go down to your shoulder too, make it easier. I'm going to turn my hips this way so my hips are facing the same way as him. I'm going to take my leg out and then I slide up to here. Now I throw this leg over the top, Now I can sit down and I can either take his back or what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to an arm bar. And then he grabs his hands together to defend and here we are, we can do an arm bar. Okay, and I'm on, and I'm on top of him, right? So we'll look at that again. So I'm here, I've got control of both legs. I do like a little rock backwards, I heist up. He's framing, I go here, we pass it uh, like past our, our head basically. I grip the far shoulder, I get a cross face, and I get here. Now if I'm here and I try to take my leg out, it's a little weird, turn your hips to, my hips are facing the same way as his. Now we slide our leg up to here, and and you can also just easily take the back here, right? Or you could just you could just come up and like, you know, go to knee and belly, or I could go arm triangle, whatever. You have so many different options. But what we're gonna do now is, is gonna slide, throw this leg over the top. Now I'm gonna go here, into an arm bar. Now I'm gonna go here. One way he might defend the arm bar. So using his elbow to push my ankle into, into his hips. In, like into, in, in, <coughs> between the legs. No, no, let, let me just push it between. Yeah. Okay, when people do that, 
something we can do is grip here. And now look, we're back in the same position. And this is my favorite thing to do with white belts. See how many times you can do this. <laughs> my, my record is eight. So, <laughs> so again, we go here. I come up. Okay, presumably he's going to frame with usually this arm. Yeah, so I go here, pass it by, grip. Grip here, turn my hips. You okay? Yeah. Take this layout, slide up. Here, fold down, and we go here. Now he, d he d does the same thing. Yep, and you can just, it's just a drill, you can just keep doing it over and over again. Okay, from here, grip. See, see how I still have the arm bar, guys? See, see? Here, I grip here, once I grip here, pose. I go here, you okay? Yeah, that's okay. Dave, get your balls. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, come on. All right, guys, let's look at one more thing we can do here. Guys, guys, guys pay, pay attention, just almost done, all right? If I, can't get, if I can't get past, this is not working. Remember what we did yesterday? Row drag, right? He's, let's say this guy's, he's strong. I can't get past, right? We're gonna, I'm pushing, so with the round drag, give me a little bit of tension, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I lean into it. Like you lean your whole body into it? Yeah, yes, yeah, so I lean into it. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, that's okay. So when you do this, really, you have to kind of put some force into it. Not too hard. I push the wrist, and I pop the elbow. Now, he has no frame. Now I can easily just move forward and pass his guard. Spin right into an arm bar on the other side, right? So, uh, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> they right, want to drill. They, they like this one, all right? <laughs> okay, we're here. Guys, so one more, watch. We're all dry. We, we lean, we lean. Push, push. So, so don't do it like this. There's no force. You have to create tension first. You okay? Yeah. Now I'm here and I drop my elbow to block the wrist or my shoulder to block the wrist. Right now, to, like lean into the arm. Yeah, so we're here. First, try this one. This is like the more Give wrap. Right, but if I can't get that, he's he's just too strong. We're here. Okay, does this make sense, guys? Yeah. And practice the drill. We go from cross ashi to top to arm bar, from arm bar to cross ashi, and you just keep so looping this. Yeah, okay. Uh, I have a question, so how do, sure. you, how do you get up? I, I know this is like a uh, motion on the Yeah, so, so, so the, the heisting action is gonna be like this, guys. So just, you know, okay. I'll just do it without a person. So guys, the heisting action is this. I create a slight, my feet are like this. I create a slight rocking back to get momentum. And then look. Right, it's a it's a technical setup. So just a basic technical setup. If I just try to do it, I sometimes find it's hard. So if I just try to do it without rocking back, sometimes I find it's difficult. Like I'm like here, I can't really. I feel like his legs are pushing me. So but but if I do a little rock back, it's usually very easy. Just create a slight rocking back motion. We're here. Very easy, and then we can move and uh, do the other things, okay? Make sense, guys? Yep. All right, let's give it a try. One, two, three.